that was not the, the, the purpose of the research. In fact, I avoided it like the plague because I knew that once I go down that rabbit hole, there is no way out. This is such a big thing that you can't not talk about this. Turned out that I couldn't run away from it. So as soon as I started to um, look at communities, as soon as I started to look at teams working together, as soon as I started to study communication, gender and technology became inexplicably intertwined for me. Um, and my third motivation is that when I was here this morning and I looked at um, the list of talks, it seemed that there should be a conversation happening about this at something like Bartown. So since no one else put up a topic, I figured, okay, let's talk about this now. So that's why this is a conversation. This isn't a talk, because a talk would imply that I have answers for you, okay, about how to bring more women into technology. I don't have those answers. It's also a half hour talk, so it's probably not going to happen that we will, welcome, that we will find answers today. But I want to have this conversation anyway. I think it's important to continue to have this conversation. I think it's important to continue to talk about this issue, just like it's important to continue to run Rails Girls every month, regardless of how many people come. Because if you reach one person, that's already better than something else. So instead of a talk, I have questions for you guys. Um, that's kind of where, I, that's how I would like to start the conversation. So I have a few general questions. First of all, my, my first question is, well, is this really an issue? Why is this a big deal? Why do we care that uh, we have real skills every month? Why do we care that we don't, do we have, do we not have enough women in technology? Do we not have enough women in science fields, in engineering fields, in, in maths, uh, doing programming? Is that really a problem? What do you guys think? Um, how many, okay, so the women here, what do you, how many of you are engineers or software engineers? What are the rest of you? You also want no. <laughs> 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 Science kills everything. So you gave me a first issue, like they're very shy. Uh, okay, we have our first stereotype. Thank you. We have our first stereotype. We are very shy. Okay, is that true? Well, you're not going to get an answer, are you? Uh, <laughs> if it's true. If it's true, that's true. So how do you talk about this issue is the second question. If this is an issue, how do you talk about this issue properly? So how do you talk about this issue without essentializing gender roles? And that's something I have a huge problem with, honestly, because whenever I look at research that does anything to do with um, gender roles, that has anything to do with women and technology, we can't run away from pigeonholing people into things. So one of my favorite pieces of research, and this is actually landmark research about Wikipedia, why women don't contribute to Wikipedia. There are very few women contributors to Wikipedia. Um, I can share this link on uh, the Facebook group later on if you guys are interested in. Sorry? What's the percentage? Um, it's something like, so there's 12% of women in uh, open source software communities, 12% of developers are women, which is much better than it used to be. It used to be single digits um, 10 years ago, so that's great. Um, in Wikipedia, I think it's a little bit better. I think it's something like 20%. I need to double check that number. But um, so this research to me was really interesting because people were looking at, um, they did a massive survey. This was like tens of thousands of uh, Wikipedia contributors. So what do you value in Wikipedia? What do you um, contribute uh, your time to? What are the things that prevent you from contributing? Um, why do you leave certain topics and start other topics? And so um, in this research, the researchers found that a lot of women were very shy about arguing their points. Uh, they were hard, uh, they found it difficult to be able to um, articulate um, in an environment that was constantly critical. Um, and so what this research, um, the conclusion that this research came to, um, and you know, the way that they framed the paper was that, hey, well, you know, women um, tend to avoid conflict, they tend to avoid disagreements, they, they, and, and you know, we should therefore create an environment that is very supportive and, and, and all of this. My problem with this research is that we start to use phrases like, women are so-and-so, insert blank here, right? And I think how we talk about the issue is really important because it frames what we do with the issue later on. So I want to ask 
you guys this question and for you guys to think about this question. Like, how do we talk about this issue in a way that doesn't essentialize the topic? How do you deal with this issue without making, without suggesting and designing, already knowing in advance what it is that you're going to find? Um, those don't, don't think of a whale problem. So, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Precisely. Right? If I tell you don't think of an elephant, that's what you're going to think about. Um, yes. Exactly. Inception. That's absolutely right. So it's a chicken and egg situation, right? Like, how do you, how do you solve this problem? Um, I want to ask the men in this room, um, how many of you are doing something connected to the technical? So engineering, uh, software development, mathematics. All right, that's why you're at bar camp. Okay, how many women are there on your team? Oh, my team lead is a lady woman. There's one. Five. Oh, my team lead, uh, my manage, my team lead is a woman. Awesome. She's the one who is leading me. Awesome. Yeah, we yeah, she's the one. But she's the only one. I don't know. We have uh, a lot of uh, lady staffs. That's uh, awesome. She's the team lead. What kind of stuff do you guys do? Sorry? What kind of stuff do you guys do? What do you work on? Oh, uh, we like do back-end development and okay. then front-end and also mobile. Is your team um, unique in your organization in that sense? Or is it normal to have women leads in the team? I think in our company it's a culture to make sure women also get into the workforce and they also get into the higher, higher level. Yeah. So, yeah. That's great to hear. That's awesome. How do you know when this started? Has this always been that way in your memory? Yeah. The moments in the corporate. I think these days a lot of co companies or corporates have this this one to make sure because whenever they publish any statistics, mm -hmm. they also tell mm -hmm. how much percent women mm -hmm. uh, in the company, how much percent in the higher ups. Mm -hmm. and so they, they take this as an initiative and also they do it. I thought like when I was very young, when it mm -hmm. was software, uh, you know how I came into the software industry. So when it says software, and the softness and the woman has some relationship. So I thought this is like one day being uh, led by ah. um, <laughs> As opposed to hardware? Uh, actually, yeah. that is the perception <laughs> yeah. in India. Yeah. That is the perception in India. I do know of a mother who moved her daughter from hardware to software because uh, of that thing. I was crushed uh, to hear that. What? what? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know of a... Yeah. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah. So in India, it's like that, yeah. Like but softwares and leads. See, you, you should not say like... Women are women, right? Yeah. They have their own features and they, they, they are unique in their sense. So, the software, is, I, I don't know why the women are not ready to get into the software. Mm -hmm. Somehow they think it's so mathematical and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But they have to re really get the break and fit the code. Then it will be okay. Alright, so we have one story. What about the rest of you guys? About five. Five? You got five? Yeah. Out of, um, Out of how many? 25. Out of 25. At least in my team. Okay. But then, um, my organization actively makes it a, a, a priority. Okay. That you so we've heard this twice already. So your organization makes this a priority. How do they do that? Well, in the German company, one of the things is, you know, in Germany, mm -hmm. there's a C, they have regulations about the number of CEOs, which are women to men. Okay. Ah, so really? it trickles down, yeah. So uh, oh, in Germany, you know, they have to say that, uh, like, 40% of CEOs must be women. Mm -hmm. And they make it regulation. And my company is not stock listed, it's a foundation, mm -hmm. even though it's a very big company. Um, so it's easy for us to adopt these things and put it down. Okay. So everywhere I go in the company, there's like a silhouette of men and women everywhere to actually uh, put this out. Okay. And one of the uh, hiring process is to have this like, you know, uh, are you sure it's not for men or women? Or things like that. All right, interesting. Um, that's <coughs> good to hear. But um, what happens if you don't have enough qualified candidates? Exactly. Yeah. So it could be a plus and minus point. In this case, you're saying, oh, just because they're women, you have to put it as a pick. It's not so much meritocracy, exactly. but you know, uh, oh, because of quota reasons to take a person who may not be qualified. So that may not be such a good thing, right? So exactly. it's a plus and minus point. We have in Singapore <coughs> seven engineers, mm -hmm. one woman. Uh, no particular class either way in our uh, recruiting. Uh, very few applicants. Mm -hmm. um, but it's so fitting. Um, yeah, where we stand, she's a team. That's been the case for a few years now. One of the things.
things I've been hearing a lot from uh, some of the companies here is, hey, do you know any female engineers? We really want to diversify our team, but we can't find any female engineers to hire. Do you know anyone? So I'm, I'm often the, the, the person that, that people <laughs> ask, um, which is great, I think. Um, it's, it's good that people sort of see me that way. Um, but that tells me that there's another problem. So it's not enough. Um, I think while it's great that we have um, a recognition that we need to fill these roles and that we need to create space for women to fill these roles, but we also need to create um, an environment where women can grow to eventually fill these roles. Um, so it seems that we need to dig even deeper than that, right? Um, those of you who are not engineers, who are women, what do you do? And how did you find out about bar camp? For myself, I just I have uh, I also am interested in technology. Mm -hmm. Although I work in a broadcast technology company, mm -hmm. I handle partnerships and marketing. Um, but my interest in technology personally just um, it allows me to um, be able to events like this and mm -hmm. be involved with uh, the technology community as well. Um, I, I personally I do see more women in my company mm -hmm. getting into product management and technical aspects of. Uh, presenting their product, so I think it's, it's, it's an emerging trend in the UK especially. I'm not sure about Singapore yet, but um, I think I missed the first part of your presentation. That's right? okay. It's not a presentation, it's yeah. a conversation. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you can jump in at any time. It's an ongoing conversation. Um, like I said, uh, what I said at the beginning was that um, we're not likely to find any answers today because, um, you know, it takes, I think it takes a whole planet to sit down and really figure this out properly. Um, but it's important to have this conversation, so that's why I'm here, and that's hopefully why you all are here, in order to continue to have this conversation. Um, thank you, though, for, um, for, for sharing with us. Um, does anyone else want to tell us a bit more? I majored in finance. Mm -hmm. um, I work for an for-profit accounting regulator, and I help us... <laughs> Michael, no. <laughs> and um, I help us build up uh, partnerships in emerging markets like Myanmar and Nepal. Mm -hmm. So I do new market development and I do um, partnerships with their government regulators cool. and private sector firms. Um, but like in our industry, we also look at um, you know how many women mm -hmm. get in. And like recently, we did a study on like how like you know for like corporate board positions, mm -hmm. it's becoming a thing as well. Like what he said, some countries are thinking about whether we should have a thirty percent corporate board positions for women and whether we should regulate that or whether we should just let that happen organically. Uh, we did a study where, you know, it, interestingly, most of the people who seem to have made it into corporate board positions, mm -hmm. they seem to have had some sort of like a finance role. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the reasonings behind um, why people attributed that, like when we mm -hmm. did the research, etc., was that, we, um, you know, they considered that like when you go into things like finance, technology, engineering, these mm -hmm. are not... Um, like traditional women roles, like how marketing could be seen, mm -hmm. and they sort of attributed that, oh, these women are like good in math, they're good in finance, mm -hmm. therefore, board position. Mm -hmm. um, right. There is a higher number of women in board positions who hold a finance qualification than men who hold one. It's That's about like one in two kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are certain professions that are very, um, that are quite significantly women dominated, and that's also a problem, like nursing, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, teaching. Like, it, yes, teaching is another one. The nursing, I think, is something like 90%. Um, at least in Singapore, um, if you look at the statistics, it's quite, um, it's, it's, it's very skewed in, in the opposite direction. And there's, there's associated gender stereotypes and gender biases against that, so you know, there's, no, there's really no reason why it should be one or the other. Um, but you know, that's really interesting. Uh, let's see, we have two more ladies. I promise I will also tell you a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it's only fair. <laughs> I'm working as a lecturer at Neon Poly right now. Awesome. Um, Educator, yes. Yeah, well, I, uh, I'm, we from, need you. I'm from the Silicon Valley, so I just grew up around tech. I graduated last year with a degree in uh, media studies and music, but mm -hmm. took some you know, CS classes on the side. And I've always been interested in that, you know, in tech, and so that's fine. Why didn't you choose that to study? Difficult question. <laughs> yeah, well, I think I, well, I took CS classes like the second semester of my mm -hmm. junior year, and so by then I would have had to graduate late, okay. so, yeah. Okay. Were you interested, though? What? Were you, have you thought about pursuing that as a career? Yeah, I'm actually plan or hoping to do a um, tech-related graduate degree. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, I've, so, to be, to, to be fair to, to all of you guys who shared some of your stories, let me tell you mine. 
Um, so I have a communications background. I don't have a technical background. Um, I have, do have a bit of a programming background um, from learning things on the internet. Um, I was initially going to study computer science, and I was very young, and I had a few choices, and I went to a computer science course in the foundational year, and my computer science lecturer was like, hey, that's great, you know, you got really good grades, but, you know, you may want to think about later on, you know, what happens when you go out into the working world, okay, so you finish this computer science degree, but it may be hard for you to find a job. Maybe you want to consider doing something else and doing this on the side. That's exactly what I did. This is, I actually had this conversation with the lecturer. When, and when your teacher tells you this, yeah. maybe you shouldn't do it, maybe you should really think hard about you know, doing something else, that really kind of sticks with you. you know, it's really hard to, to tell yourself, and you know what... I'm yeah, just curious, why do you think you said that? Is it maybe because of your gender role? Um, to this day, I don't know. I wish I, could, I wish I could track him down and ask him. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, was, he was saying that um, it would be hard for me to find a job. Not that he didn't think I could do it, but he said that um, it would be hard for me to find a technical position later on anyway. So it makes more sense to do a non-technical degree and add on technical skills on the side because I'm not going to get into a technical what he said. So he's like, look, this is what the job market is like now. You should know this before you start the degree. This is what he said. This was, to be fair, this was like 10 years ago. Right? Um, but um, this is not a unique conversation. So throughout my research, when I started to dig deeper into this issue, when I started to talk to more people, stories like this keep coming up again and again. So there are parents, there are teachers, there are um, people around us who often pigeonhole us into certain ideas of what women should and, and shouldn't be studying uh, software versus hardware, um, arts versus social science, you know, the, the, kind of, uh, the kind of kids you have on posters that are representing the different courses when you choose uh, Excuse, I'm going to bring someone to this discussion. Aha. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. You know. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> yes. Um, your research is for only for samples of Singapore. Um, so the research didn't initially um, have a gender component, and it was not just uh, sampled in Singapore, but Singapore is sort of the launching pad. And um, it's based on working people, uh, people employed, or is It's it? based on people who contribute to code to open source software. So it's only well, open source? So I, I speak to open source software developers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, sorry, I, I didn't catch your, your research topic earlier. So my research topic is um, remotely connected to this issue. I'm interested in conflicts in open source software development teams or communication breakdowns in open source software development teams. And how I came to this issue was when I started to look more closely at communications issues. And gender is something that comes up a lot as a um, sort of a focal point in a lot of open source software communities. So I've seen this issue come up again and again in my research. And um, so that was one of the motivations for uh, So, So your PhD research is not from computer science, but more on... Uh, uh, what? Social science. Social science. That's right. Uh, sorry. Yeah, one, one thing that I have to say is, uh, okay, my team is very small. My team only got me and another person. Mm -hmm. That's two person, but we are both male. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I, I don't have any other female developers. But before the gender issue, right, I find that the nationality issue mm -hmm. is a bigger issue. What do you mean? Like, for me, it's very hard to hire a Singaporean. Okay. Yeah, whatever that, I mean, all the other people have said, right, okay, don't apply to women. I think those apply even stronger to Singaporean. Because okay. I also teach tuition at the same time. Mm -hmm. So my students are telling me, right, okay, that their parents actually advise them studying computer science because they think that it's an easily replaceable labor force. Okay. So I don't find the gender issue that big of an issue, but I find race, nationality, a bigger issue. But the way that I try to see things right is that I do not try to say set a quota for Singaporean or Vietnamese or mm -hmm. whatever. I try to diversify the thing. Mm -hmm. So I will try to identify a character traits that I need right to make the whole thing more robust in their thinking. Okay. Then I will actually just set out to look for that person. But nonetheless, when it comes to interviewing Singaporean, it's always very difficult. Here's the thing, no? mm -hmm. you're, you're basing on, you're saying technology and you're using GitHub. GitHub is programming, mm -hmm. but technology could be, may not be programming. Like for example, my building, 
uh, could be hardware. OSR, ISY, tons of emails. Mm -hmm. But programming, right, mm -hmm. in Singapore is very little. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so and, and the thing is, if you take sample size Singapore, programmers, I, I don't want to piss off anyone or make a stereotype, but it tends to be Indians. And, <laughs> right, I'm an Indian, I'm not from India, but. Our, our team is colleagues. entirely Indian and Filipino. Sorry? <laughs> if, our dev team is entirely Indian and Filipino, every single one. Yours. We have one Singaporean. That's interesting. Yeah. But the thing is, yeah, even if you have a female developer, they tend to be here not on their own but with the husband. Mm. And if the husband moves, they move. If the husband does a X Y Z, they follow. Mm. So I don't know. Maybe that is there, but uh, maybe GitHub is not really a good um, indicator of uh, that. That's what I'm saying. You know. Oh, okay, programmers in general. Yeah, I mean, it really depends yeah. on who you're sampling. So. Um, <coughs> Definitely, there may be um, components where there are more women. And I think it's interesting to identify themes like this. I think it's interesting that there are more, you know, in your observation, more women Indian programmers rather than and from anywhere else. That tells me that there's a promising positive stereotype there. It tells me yeah. that there is some kind of social reinforcement that happens that doesn't happen somewhere else. That tells me that there's something, um, that there's something to look at. So we have, like, five more minutes, I think, before we need to break and uh, go to the, the lightning talks. I promised you questions, not answers. Um, <laughs> what, my third question was going to be, what do we do about this, right? So is it a problem? How do we talk about it? How do we solve it? Where do we start? Actually, a lot of these people don't even know this kind of things like this. Mm -hmm. Can you narrow or actually specify which exact field you're talking about? In a sense, the module of computer science or programming. I think these guys bring up an interesting point. Mm -hmm. It's like you say if you sample GitHub, then you get a very specific type of code that somebody mm -hmm. who's doing that doesn't contribute to open source, for instance. Mm -hmm. And um, from, our back, from my background, that's what I see. Mm -hmm. uh, I work in the research lab, by the way. And um, people who are doing life sciences, you see, like, you have large scale females, mm -hmm. and people are working in um, um, the more so there is that general bias there. So, yeah. and I don't think it's true that you can't get good female coders, um, mathematicians, because we have some really really good students. And in fact, like 60, I, I 70 percent so. of our students. Are <laughs> I should hope that that is not true. Yeah, it's not true because we see like 60, 70 percent of the best better students in the in the secondary school mm -hmm. time they are actually um, female. And why don't they carry on to go on and do um, science? That's the question, exactly. I think. Why? That is the question. Yeah. So I think we've identified an intervention point. Yeah. So by asking the question, yeah, like where where so are these girls going? Like so if they're not choosing these roles, why not? What else are they doing? What are those things that are causing them to choose this? How do we intervene in that process? And there we go. We have one possible action item. Some of you guys spoke to um, some juniors I know at um, TechFest. What happened? <coughs> so you were, you were selling. <laughs> Stop the silence. <laughs> so what happened there? You, you say. I think. I think <laughs> um, I mean, I. That's that's something I strongly believe. Like mm -hmm. before you get to the pre uh, university level, mm -hmm. that's where you have to fix the ratio. Because once they're out there, I mean, majority of the pool of women engineers and scientists will come from the universities. Mm -hmm. Of course, you can later on become one as well. Yeah. So I think TechFest is a great initiative to kind of bring their gender balance there before. You know, and uh, I believe that the conversation has to happen from young. It is the toys you play with. It is the parents' perception, the society's perception. Yeah. Uh, it, it has to come from the young. and. We have to give it uh, a generation. Yeah. 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 So clearly, we're not going to solve this problem in the next no. three minutes of uh, <laughs> this particular uh, talk. Um, to build on that, uh, I'm going to give you guys one last uh, sort of takeaway story. Um, and this happened literally two weeks ago. Um, I was at McDonald's, I was getting my cup of coffee, and uh, dad and little daughter are next to me at the other counter. And uh, the lady behind the counter is uh, letting the girl choose her Happy Meal toy. So you know how Happy Meal works, right? There is the Happy Meal toy that everyone queues up for. Yes. 
Oh. Excellent. <laughs> well done. <laughs> All right, Happy Meal story and then Audrey. <laughs> All right, so you know how Happy Meals work, right? There's the main toy that everyone queues up for, usually it's a Hello Kitty, but there's also a boy version of the Happy Meal and the girl version of the Happy Meal. So there's, right? And so um, the, the lady takes out both toys and she waves them in front of the little girl, and the little girl is standing there quietly looking up at her really shyly, and she goes, so which one do you want? And before the girl can answer, she goes, I know you want this one, and it's the, the, the toy, the not the color. car. It's the, it's the girl, uh, it's the girl toy, it's not the car. Yeah. Um, the pink color thing, the fluffy thing, not the, you know, not the Lego set, not the car. Did you actually want to drink in the person's face? <laughs> <laughs> this is exactly what I'm talking about. So we need to even start on that level. Um, so what is my takeaway for you guys before I let Lakshan um, I'm introduce? I'm going to drink. <laughs> oh, <laughs> So, Audrey, welcome. Um, uh, my takeaway for you guys is only this. Um, I want to have this conversation. You should have this conversation with other people as well. It's not an easy conversation to have. It's not an easy topic to frame without running into a lot of stereotypes, without running into a lot of um, problems. But it's an important conversation to have, and it's important to continue to think about this issue. I think as long as, even if we all think about some of these problems, and if we stop and question some of these stereotypes, that's really better than not doing anything at all. For both men and women. Because there are situations in which the reverse is also true. Like we said, you know, for nursing. This is, this is a problem that's not just a problem for women. The problem with gender stereotypes is a problem that affects both genders. So my encouragement to everyone here today is just to think about this a little bit more. So the reason Lakshan brought Audrey in here Audrey, you're going to be like everyone's zoo animal for the day. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Uh -oh. So this is, a, this is a conversation about women and technology. Right? And uh, we are trying to, we're not trying to answer the question, because we can't answer this question in a, in a half hour, but we are asking the question, where are the women in technology? And why aren't they, uh, why aren't they more visible? Why aren't they choosing these career paths? And why aren't they um, learning how to program? Do you want to tell us a story? Um, yeah. Before Can I share up? from here? Um, yeah, I just joined a tech company as an apprentice. Uh, oh. um, last week. Woo! Tell them how much programming experience you have. <laughs> so I started um, really seriously in May. Um, that was on Friday. Tell me the background before coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 I'm trained as a lawyer. So I studied law in SMU, and then, uh, and then I, I went through the usual lawyer route. I got called to the bar, and I practiced for about a year. Uh, I actually took, took a break to uh, do, uh, try and do my own startup. Uh, but then I realized that as, as I was working on it, um, I found myself, I found that I couldn't do a lot of things because I had to rely on my technical developer. And I, I didn't like to, I mean, I found that things were moving really slow because I had to rely on him. And, and, um, and, and it was just a lot of trouble for me to get someone to build my product for me. So I found myself handicapped, technically, uh, and I didn't like that feeling. So uh, I decided to, I decided that um, I, would, I would actually go back to law. So I did go back to practice, uh, and, and, uh, and I wanted to learn programming on the side because I wasn't really sure if I could program, and uh, I wasn't sure if I would like programming. So I, I wanted to give myself some options, you know, um, consider going back to, I mean, consider, I mean, practice again and, and just see if I like programming. So uh, when I was practicing, um, I, I, I did that part-time, uh, after work, uh, every day, and on weekends. Um, that, that was around May, uh, May to May to now. Uh, and uh, I picked up Go as my backend language uh, in, uh, in, in July. And, uh, and and back then, uh, back then I, I wasn't I wasn't sure um, you know what Go was about, what what backend programming is about. I didn't know what SQL was. Uh, I didn't know how to store um, data in the database. So I so I read. This, this July, by the way. July. <laughs> this is July. This is this <laughs> two months ago. This is two months ago. Yeah. So prior to May, uh, I didn't have any technical background at all. Uh, I didn't go to a. I didn't have any technical training in school. Uh, I did law. Uh, I had. I came from an arts background, actually, uh, in JC. Uh, yeah, and then so so I actually went to Rails Girls uh, in June, uh, end June, 
um, and then I met Lakshan there, and I was, uh, so, so, you know, I, I was play, playing with a bit of front-end programming, and, and I'm like, I still don't get what, you know, programming is about, you know, so let's just learn a, a back-end programming language, and, and I asked Lakshan, so uh, should I learn Node.js, you know, because I did JavaScript, and, and it's like, okay, let's just learn Node, and Lakshan was like, why don't you learn Go? It has an easy learning curve. <laughs> like, oh, easy learning <laughs> curve. <laughs> so, so, so I got like, you know, I got attracted by, 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 by the promise of easy, you know. <laughs> but guess what? <laughs> you got friends like me. Yeah, I got friends like me. It's a true story. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to make it extra hard. <laughs> <laughs> See the real side of it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was true, Lakshan. Like like and law is similar, right? If then, no, it's like that law. Logical, la, logical. Logical. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, okay, so actually, before I considered node and before I considered, um, you know, uh, a goal, um, I did. Uh, I mean, I did the code academy stuff, right? So I, I, I did. I went through the Ruby course. I went through the Python course, uh, and I was looking for uh, tutorials online on how to build something in Ruby or Python. And I found that the I found that um, I mean that the frameworks didn't really teach me anything, and the, the tutorials didn't teach me anything either, because they just told me what to do, but I still didn't know the underlying concepts. Uh, so my experience with Go was that I mean it was very hard in the beginning because I wasn't used to the syntax. You know, like um, it, it looked really ugly, and it looked like it had a lot of extra stuff uh, compared to Ruby and, and Python. So, so 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 every so every time I I, I, I went back to go out, I, I had at the back of my head, what is Lunch and say? <laughs> <laughs> you know? But um, but but I just kept on because um, then like her friends came to me and like <laughs> yeah, blamed me for it. <laughs> yeah, because why the hell you suggested like to learn? <laughs> Yeah, because I was complaining. Oh, she's struggling. Yeah, we had mutual friends. So I just, you know, complained with him. You know, like, like this go is crazy, man. Then, he, then, but he kept on telling me to learn Ruby on Rails. But I mean, personally, I, 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 I somehow didn't really like, you know, learning it um, at the beginning. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's my story. And uh, and and I left, uh, left my law firm recently uh, to join a tech company as an apprentice, so that I can learn it faster. Apprentice so you developer. Build along the way, you build two apps. Apprentice developer. Yeah. Uh, yes. So that's Audrey's story, and that's. I think that's awesome. Uh, thanks, Lux uh, thanks, Lakshan, for bringing her in here. So apparently, we're setting lightning talks outside right now. Sure. Um, so think about this. Talk to each other about this. Whenever you need a girl, tell her about Audrey. <laughs> if you need a girl who is thinking about getting into programming, tell her about Audrey. Yeah, the first programmer was done by a girl. Exactly, the first computers for women. Thank you.